questions. Floor is yours. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the last thing that we did, so here's the final thing here. Uh, if, Um, if we had more of a normal basis of value, and why is any vector at all in Rn, then say I've been using this notation, then this y hat, which is the projection of y on some place value, uh, and uh. Another way to think about this is this y hat is in W and it is the uh, it is the closest vector in W to the vector of Y that we put in here. Uh, it's given by uh, Um, and so, by the way, what's the difference between this formula and the one that we gave earlier when the basis was not uh, orthonormal necessarily, but was orthogonal, is this number was divided by u1 dot u1, and this number was divided by u2 dot u2, and so forth, right? But if the basis is still more than normal, what happens when you dot any of those two i's with itself? You get one. Everybody agree with that? Because the magnitude of all these vectors, or the, uh, the length of all these vectors, one is the square of them, one, right? So this is just a simple formula here. And if you make a matrix Q by doing this. So this is an N row by K column matrix uh, that's made up by putting uh, these orthonormal vectors in here. Uh, then, and this is just kind of a notation. Then another way you can think of this is, and this is exactly the same formula. In fact, I, I sort of challenge you to write this down and work it out. And if you got u times u transpose and then multiply by y, you can exactly this. So that was kind of all I wanted to wrap up there. Okay. So, questions? Yes. Um, Okay. Um, Actually, I've got it right here. Which question are you worried about? I think it was the blue one there. They wanted us to solve for if B is in A, where there was A and B. Okay, so is this the one where? Uh, 
plan an equation against B in terms of actually it might be healthy for me to just kind of go with yeah. that. You do both. Yes. 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 So I have this vector uh, here. Uh, first one is find the angle. <laughs> and B is like one zero zero minus one. This is kind of long. This one isn't too bad, right? So find angles between U and B. I'm going to keep using U over and over again. Actually, so I'll do that. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we find the angles? We've got this formula here, right? Don't we? That like cosine of theta is U dot B minus cosine of theta dot U. Okay, so we can do that. Is U dot B minus cosine So U dot B in this case looks like it is going to be two. Everybody on board with that? And length of U let's see, you dot it with itself in big square root, so it can be one, two, three, four. And length of B. You got it with cell one zero zero one. <coughs> Hope you know it so far. And so cosine theta is equal to two dot b. This. So I get theta is uh, power four forty five. Right. And actually, I, I still think that this is something of a wonder, right? Because these are four-dimensional vectors, but it's hard to you can rescale them and figure out a plane to put them both in. But I mean, just doing some of the numbers here tell me, hey, those two sit at 45 degree angle in the story. Number B, it says it says now let W equal one A B three. <coughs> Now we have W. One AB three. It says uh, if the angle between U and W is power of three, find an equation that gives B in terms of A. So I'm going to write that down. If the angle. You and W is power of three. Uh, find an equation of weights uh, that didn't be in some space. Okay, well, basically, I'm using the same equation here. Just got to figure out how to apply it. Well, in this case, I have theta <coughs> power of three. So cosine theta is remember what's cosine power of three? Agreed. One half. So one half is going to be that player. Um, what else do we have? I guess we're going to need u dot b. So we did, or I'm sorry, in this case, u dot w. Well, what happens when you dot u and w? You get one times one. 
and then you get minus one times A, and then you get one times B, and minus one times three, which equals uh, minus A plus B. There's the dot product. Okay. Uh, now, the length of U should be two. I just like what it's for. Right. Uh, what's the length of W? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll take one more step there. Uh, one plus a squared, b squared plus nine. So absolute square root of a squared is b squared. Okay. okay, so I think I've got all the pieces that I need to kind of put this together. Let's see, cosine theta, we do have one half. U dot B was minus A plus B minus 2, and the length of U was 2, and the length of the other one was just the same. Okay. Now all we got to do is solve this. Notice that there's a 2 in the bottom here, so that gives that out. <clears throat> so I get the equation. I get that. Now I can do this. So, can anybody see something I might do to simplify things? Yeah. That's a great idea. Pull out each step under the right. right? So let's let's dig that out if we can. So let's start both sides as described. And I get that part was easy. This part's a little bit more obnoxious. By the way, you all know how I did that test class? Uh, sure. um, <laughs> by the way, if you just multiply out, and I like to keep track of these things too, if you just multiply that out, <clears throat> x plus y plus c times x plus y plus c, and you just get on your bulldozer and multiply it out, how many terms should you get? Nine. Everybody agree? Because really, this is multiply x, all these three, multiply y, all these three, multiply z, all these three, I get nine terms. This is going to help me keep track. But here's what I did three of the terms are going to come from squaring this. Everybody agree with that? You're going to have an x squared to y squared is sure, right? Where are the other six terms going to come from? Multiplying this in different orders, and you're going to do it twice. You're going to have an x, y, you're going to have a y, x, x, y, y, x. So you're going to have two for each of the three possible combinations. You're going to have two x, y's, you're going to have two y, z's, and two x, z's, right? And that's how I did that in my head. Square and square and square. That's these three right here. Multiply these two, and there's two of them. Multiply these two, and there's two of them. Multiply these two, and there's two of them. Okay. That's the quick way, but of course, you can get on your bulldog and multiply it out. Okay, now something very convenient happened here. What's that? 
the A squared, B squared get together and call to have a ritual suicide pact. And what we have is 10 is 4 plus 4A minus 4B uh, minus 2A. And I believe that the question asked for B in terms of A, right? So really, all I want to do is kind of segregate. I'm going to put the stuff in B's on one side, stuff about B's on the other. So I'm going to bring this up here. So A, B, four B. That doesn't count on the other side. Is four A minus six. <laughs> So uh, I get a b plus two b equals two a minus three. Pull a b out. And there you go. There's some questions being comes back at the end of the system. Any questions on that so far? What value or values of A make it impossible for the angle between U and W to be pi over three radians? Yes. That is correct. And you can sort of back, you can sort of back substitute this as well. But notice there's a big hint in this problem here. You've got a serious problem with say it's negative two, and for that, it's impossible for the angle to be affected. Um, okay. Any questions on that? Find an equation for B in terms of A that guarantees that U and W are, are, are orthogonal. This was actually in the lead. Well, what does it mean to be orthogonal? It just means that the dot product is zero, right? If I agree with that, this is an easier equation. So notice that u dot w, we've done this before, is going to be, uh, you know, I can't quite remember the expression here. What was it? Point A, G, 3. <coughs> So the dot product here is minus two. Yeah, we've done that computation before, right? And this must be equal to zero if it's orthogonal. And so I get B equals A plus one. Okay, any questions about that? Yes. Can you do the last part? Can you do the last part? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not done. I was too sure about the problem. Okay, so so the next the next part part E says let D be the subspace of R four span by U.
Hmm, how are we going to do that? Somebody came into my office and asked me about this a couple of days ago, and I said, Your problem is this is too easy in a certain extent because it, it, there's only one equation and it looks a little silly, right? Remember, what you're looking for is you're looking for all the craft that is basically sitting at a right angle to every vector in the span. Well, there's, a, there's really only one vector, right? So everything in the span is just a line. Um, we're in R4, correct? How many, how big do you expect? I mean, we haven't really talked about this theorem yet. Uh, that's, that's coming up, but given your intuition, how big do you expect these perfect to be? No greater than four. Uh, can you be more precise, though? I mean, I agree with you. Well, so let me ask you this. Suppose I have a one dimensional vector just in, in the plane. So there's a subspace just line. How many vectors are perpendicular to that? Or what's the dimension of space perpendicular to that? Just like the dimension of space. Ah, there you go. There's only one space that's perpendicular to that. What if I have a vector like in three space? What's the dimension of everything that's perpendicular to that? It's two, right? Because now you've got an entire plane that's perpendicular. Everybody agree with that? Now, I, I can't do crap with my hands anymore because it's four dimensional space, but what do I have? I have basically a line in four dimensional space. I expect B part to have three dimensions, three dimensions. I expect this to have two dimensions. So, how do we tackle this? Well, recall. Uh, well, a curve. So here's what I want to do. Let's let A be my vector U in row. Uh, where is she? <laughs> this is a one by four matrix. Right? And row A is just this row here, right? Now, when I'm looking for this, really, this, the hunt for B part is the same thing as, and here's the way I can recount this question What's the null space of that, this matrix? Okay, how do we do a null space? Well, we do all the operations on, we do row operations. There's only one row, right? Not a lot of operations I can do on that, right? And we try to get it in what? Reduced row echelon form? There it is, right? This is what's a little confusing about this. Is there's only there's really only one row, right? This is already in row reduced echelon form. And so let me kind of write this out explicitly. X2, X3, X4 are free. Right? The only bit of column is this, right? X1 is basic. Right? This is a great sign because I've got three free variables, and that's what I predicted. This should be a three dimensional space. And I've only got one equation that's governing. Here it is. Right. This is confusing because it seems right, but everybody see what's going on here now. So let's dig out the null space. So a typical element of null space in this looks like x1, x2, x3, x4. And of course, these first variables are three, or I should say the last variables I get. And then X1 in terms of the other track is this. Right. 
And so I can rewrite this as X2 times 1, 1, 0, 0. X3 times minus 1, 0, 1, 0. And X4 times 1, 0, 0, 1. So my basis here and okay. suppose you don't have a lot of self confidence. How can you check? Well, let's see, as far as the basis statement goes, I think we have to agree that these are all linearly independent, right? Because I've got those, I, I think in the, I think we talked about this first last time, it's got these kind of hanging ones with zeros everywhere else. So this is a linearly independent set. But what's, a, what, how do I know that this is actually in uh, uh, you part? Yes. What's that? That's right. If you want to check this, Dot these three linearly independent things with uh, u, and if it's orthogonal, you win. What do we got? We got a pair of can see. When I dot it, I get zero <coughs> minus one of one zero one zero one zero. One, zero. Okay, all three of these work, and they're all linearly independent. So this has got to be it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Oh, right, right. Uh, it says if W is in B perp, write W is a linear combination of the basis you found in E and use this to double check. Okay. So now, so is everybody okay at the, the point? Okay, so now suppose, what if this is, this is part F, I guess? So let's suppose that W is in B perp. I said, let's write this in terms of the basis. Well, that means that W is equal to, uh, okay, so I'll do it this way. Basis one one zero zero minus one zero one zero. Of course, you can formally set up equations if you like, but I think that because the basis takes on this particular form, you might be able to figure it out. Yeah, I can write down equations to figure out how to kind of balance it, right? But I think just using again the weird trick. Take a look at this. Can you tell what one of these three blanks has to be if one A, B, C, three is a linear combination of these three? Yes. This one has to be three, right? Because everything else is giving you zero. The only way you're going to be able to make a three is to stick a three there. Everybody agree with that? Okay. Can you help me out on this one? We'll see. I've got to. I've got to have a B in the third board. No help. No help. This has to be a B. Correct. And now I think I've like totally got this thing beat right because it looks like I've only got one here, zero, zero. So this has to be an A. Am I agreeing? Now look what happens. When I put this all together over here, 
What do I get in the last coordinate? I get a three, right? What do I get in this coordinate? I get a B. What do I get in this coordinate? I get an A. And what do I get in the top coordinate? A minus B plus C. Everybody agree with that? Now, if W is actually in B first, what must happen? This thing has to match this thing. Everybody agree with that? Those two have to match. It's in there. And what do I get? A times B plus C is equal to 1. And solving this B, I get B equals A plus C. Which is exactly what I got. So it's all coming together, man. It's time together. Any questions? Okay, I think I did through some final number two as well. Uh, I threw in number two because I thought it might help with one part E well. But anyway, any questions on what we've done so far? Okay, so let's look at uh, number two. And number two is just kind of a, a different version of one, one E. So I give you two five dimensional vectors here. Uh, so I'll tell you, U is Okay, let's see. By the way, use your intuition here. Um by the way, these two vectors, U and V, are linearly independent. Um, so here, this is part of the problem yet, but I'm trying to develop it. Can somebody tell me how I know these two are linearly independent? That's right. That's a, that, that's a nice trick that you can use with just two vectors, right? The only way these two are linearly dependent is if this one's multiple this one. But, but <laughs> So you'd have to multiply, to make the first term minus, you'd have to multiply this by three halves to get this, right? Works, works, but doesn't work, right? So you've already failed the third, fourth, if I agree with that. So these two are linearly independent. So V is a two dimensional vector space, if I agree with that. And it is a two dimensional subspace of R5. How big do you expect V perp to be dimension wise? I, I, I expect it to be three, right? I expect it to be, um, this is two dimensional. I expect V perp to be five minus two or three dimensional. Let's see what happens. Again, using this bit that we know earlier. I'm going to make a I'm going to make a matrix of rows out of this. I'm going to let a be two minus two one eight six three minus three one eleven seven. I'm going to call this a the row space of a is exactly b, right? Because two rows of a, two vectors of a span the 
And the thing says, if I'm looking for the part of row A, which is the same thing as the part of B, then I, all I need to do is find the null space. So this is another null space. So let's see where this goes. Uh, so I am going to. I'm going to take minus one times this and add it to this, and I'm going to put it on top. So minus two plus three, one, plus two, minus three, one, that's going to be zero, three, one. And then I'm going to put this back down the bottom. So basically, that's that minus one times this. This row, and then I flip the row. Yes. The option be one minus one is zero to three. Uh, yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Oh, I was a minor. Yes. Everybody okay? Okay, now uh, this is prescription here is just multiply by negative two and add two and there you go. That's in row reduced echelon form, right? I've got two pivot columns here and here. And I've got zero plus and yeah, it's all good. So what do I have? I have three. Well, which ones are three? Good. X2, X4, X5. And so what equations do I have to sort of govern things for me? Well, I got x1 minus x2 plus 3x4 plus x5 is 0. And I get x3 plus 2x4 plus 4x5 is 0. And so let me, let me make that a little bit prettier here. Let me solve for the uh, basic variables. X1 is X2 minus 3X4 minus X5. And X3 is minus 2X4 minus x So, what does the typical element of the null space look like? X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Of course, these three, two, four, and five are all three variables. And the other ones can be written in terms of them. So, instead of X5, X4, X2, and x3 is minus 2x4 minus 4x5. And x1 is x2 minus 3x4 minus x5. So this is. X2 times 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, plus x4 times negative 3, 0, negative 4, uh, 1, 0, and x5 times negative 1, 0, negative 4. Oh, 
we should not have, we should be able to play. Maybe we should. This should be the make it forward. Uh, zero. So the basis I get. Is this one point zero 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 uh minus three O oh, minus two one zero and one O oh, I'm sorry minus one O oh, minus four O oh, And six or six and five. Yeah. And so you can check these live by making sure that they're perpendicular to both and three, but we we go on the other time. Yes. So when you use row A for what we call A, do you um instead of doing row A, do you well, I made I made um, yeah. So if you make if you make this out of column vectors, then the row A is transpose that. But see, I, I use this actual formula that we have because what I did is I built the matrix A to have these two in rows, right? And because when you multiply the row. Because you're multiplying the row by the columns. So my A is something like this uh, 2 minus 2, 1, 8, 6, and 3 minus 3, 1, 11, 7. Uh, and if you multiply, and this is why this works, uh, let me just actually do this computation, which is the master's one, this one. What happens when you multiply um, this by this, right? Well, you're going to get two vectors, agreed? But what do you get in the first row? First row, you get minus two, still minus two, minus four, plus six, you get zero, right? Now, encoded in that, what you're really saying is this row, this column is zero. That means this vector and this vector dotted zero, right? And in the next computation, we're like minus three, minus four, minus seven, plus seven, is zero. So again, what you're getting is the second row times this is zero. That's why this works because it's multiplication with the rows times columns. When you get the zero vector, that means every row dotted with this column is zero. And that's why it's the notice. Would you still do the same thing even if G and E were not uh, very long? Like if they were a two by one vector instead? Oh, yeah. I, actually, I don't care what you do as long as it's mathematically sound and works out. This is the way that I work. But yes, I would do the same. Okay, other questions? Yes. So it's on. 2018 squares 20. 2018 20. Okay, I can get that. I was just wondering what the turn on. Oh, you could, Graham Schmidt? Yeah. We haven't done that yet. Okay. Yeah, so that Graham Schmidt won't be until the final. But yeah, 
to answer your question, the Gram-Schmidt is a process where you can take a group of vectors that span a space and you can do this little process and get it to, to barf out an orthonormal basis. So we're going to learn how to do that. Okay, other questions? Yes. Um, I was kind of hoping that we could find an example of the, the closest distance between a vector and it's like projection or something. Oh, in the subspace? Okay. So let me let me make something out and I don't <laughs> And let uh, now you tell me right. Let me also point out that this is a two-dimensional subspace of R3, right? Because these two vectors are clearly linear, right? Because they match here, but they don't match anywhere else, right? Uh, give me a three-dimensional vector, make some uh, We'll make it fun, not just all together. Six. Oh, I don't know if that's fun or not. Uh, uh, three, six, nine. Okay, so I think this is the kind of question that's for me to answer, but correct me if I'm wrong. Find vector in W uh, span here, closest. By the way, I just had you make something up, and I, I haven't checked it yet. It is possible, you'd have to be really, really lucky, but it is possible that Y actually ended up inside the space. What, what, what answer do you think I'm going to get if Y is actually in the span of U and V? You'll get Y back, right? And you'll get the same thing, because if it's already in there, it's clearly the closest to itself. Here's the answer to this. It is just it's just the projection uh, of W Y. So let's see what we need here. Which equals um, Y dot U over U dot U. I'm expecting Y. Dot B over B dot B, whatever this turns out to be. So let's see, uh, my players here are U and uh, so let's see what uh, what I need here. U dot U. When I got U with itself, I get five, don't I? B dot B is like 11. Uh, and let's see, Y dot U is going to be minus 15. And Y dot B is going to be See, that's going to be nine and twenty seven is thirty six. So, this should turn out to be uh, y dot u over u dot u is going to be minus three u, and y dot b over b dot b is the unfortunate. 36 11 B, which is whatever the heck this turns out to be. You've got three times 
first negative three and three squares, I guess, and 36 elevenths. So it's going to be minus three, minus three, so it's going to be three elevenths. Um, zero, 36 elevenths. And finally, uh, six and one away elevenths. So that's 174 elevenths. By the way, so that vector should be the closest vector in the subspace to the vector that you gave you 369. See if you can figure out how far away it is. Any questions? All right, well, uh, I will see you all, I hope, at 6 later. What? I hope I see you in my book.